So, <laughs> all right, let's. Well, you can talk to Sarah next. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Sarah says her questions on genetics and body composition. I know genetics have a large part in how our bodies form and react to foods, the environment, and etc. But how much do we have control of it when it comes to body composition? I'm in my mid 30s and have always been athletic and focus on healthy eating, now paleo focused. However, my weight, while I'm still in a healthy range, doesn't budge easily despite my efforts. And it's been like this ever since my teens. I don't want to compare myself to others, but it is frustrating when I eat so clean, I'm active with weights and cardio, and the person next to me has a slimmer waistline and eats fast food and rarely exercises. I know I can become slimmer with extreme effort, but those extreme efforts are not good to my body, and I don't want to add additional stress. Should I just give up and not fight my body and just focus on my healthy living, or do you think I can lose some extra fat without extreme measures? She's female, 37 years old, five foot seven, 147 to 155 pounds with body fat around 18%. Um, she says she has an athletic build, muscular legs and upper body, chubby midsection that rarely firms up. She does have SIBO and gut issues, uh, follows paleo, low FODMAP diet, um, some intermittent fasting, lifts weights uh, heavy two times a week, also does some hit and orange theory fitness two times a week. Uh, she says if she breathes on peanut butter or eats too much paleo granola, she gains instantly and has to go back on a strict IF keto, but her midsection is never firm. Hmm. Hmm. The, so I, I mean, one of the questions I, I guess straight out of the gate here or kind of the broader questions is where, how much, fiddling do we have with genetics? And I, I think that in general, we have quite a bit, but there's kind of a caveat on that. I'll use myself as an example. If I were to overeat a processed Western diet, I would never be the person that gets to 300 pounds because I would die before that. Mm -hmm. My blood pressure skyrockets. I, I, I get hypertensive. I get dyslipidemic. My blood sugars go crazy so it I, I don't know if this makes a hundred percent sense but i'm trying to tackle it from the other direction i only have so much control over my body composition in the negative direction because i'll literally die before i got really overweight you know for for my size and frame um which is kind of interesting you know there it, and this relates to this whole notion of a personal fat threshold some people, uh, uh, they can stick enormous amounts of fat into their uh, fat cells and the fat cells can uh, split, go through hyperplasia and you get more and more fat cells. And from a, avoiding the end stage problems of overeating, that's actually a good thing. It buys you more time in general. Um, so the flip side of this is that, yeah, I mean, we, we can have some degree of, of, uh, kind of limitations on, on where we can go with this stuff. Uh, it, it's interesting. Were it not for, uh, Sarah mentioning the SIBO gut issues, I would almost steer her towards kind of like paleo, but more Catawba paleo. Mm -hmm. So lower fat, higher carb, um, maybe some of the 16, eight, you know, uh, uh, eating schedule, I think time, you know, early time restricted eating, like making breakfast, your biggest meal is kind of one. It, it seems to be one of these, like just gimmies, like this just mm -hmm. seems to be a freebie. Like it, it, if it works for you, you know, make your, your breakfast huge, and then you can kind of plug in from there based off the rest of your day. And so you could be really consistent with that, stack the calories early. But the problem with the SIBO and gut issues is that if you start feeding it a lot of carbohydrate, then that, that tends to feed all that stuff forward. I'm still in some sort of a gut flare right now. Like I'm basically carnivore right now because any plant material right now sends me running to the can and that's a ton of fun. So I, I feel pretty good. It's so hard to leave the house. It. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> well, it's hard to, well, yeah, yeah. It's hard to do a lot of things. Um, any other thoughts on this? I mean, she doesn't mention like sleep and stress. Sleep and stress, um, also and just sleep, her hormonal status. Sleep can be such a big one for body composition. So, you know, making That's sure that she's in bed early, lights are out, you know, yep. really good sleep hygiene with regards to all of that. Um, because 
we've seen people who exercise all the time, even though they're eating clean, but they are up late and have a lot of stress in their lives and they just cannot lean they out cannot around lean the out. midsection in particular. Yeah. So that could be yeah. something. That's a good call. Um, Probably pretty good on that. But it, so, yeah, so the, the places, the takeaways, we should have some takeaways. And protein, like really focus. I mean, paleo can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. It can mean I'm eating sweet potatoes and, you know, obviously protein, but really focusing on the protein can be can really be good for body yeah. composition. Yeah, it can so be incredible. So really. If you're not getting enough protein at each of your meals, then there's a tendency to overeat everything else. Yeah. Um, so, uh, d- d- track where you are currently and figure out where the protein intake is and then maybe shoot for like about a gram of protein per pound of body weight which is going to be a a good amount Mm -hmm. but um shoot for that Uh, mainly lean proteins and then whatever vegetable matter works Mm -hmm. for you in between Mm -hmm. um uh, uh, particularly to support your activity levels I would probably, uh, and then look at your sleep, like what time are you going to bed? What time do you get up? What's the sleep quality like? This is a situation where like the aura ring or some sort of a sleep tracker can be helpful. But I I have to say, I like these things on Mm short-term interventions. I'm not a big fan of them over the the long haul. And then I would get uh, uh, hormones checked, thyroid, Mm -hmm. uh, androgens. Just so you've got a baseline so that if it all looks good that's great but then we can look at this years down the road and see if things are changing mm-hmm. so protein sleep and hormones yep and then uh ping us back sarah in like two months and yeah. let us know how, how how you're doing yeah 